and I know you take this challenge seriously, but Secretary Fudge, could you discuss what you're hearing from communities regarding the greatest barriers to housing and how have things evolved since uh, you first became secretary in this area in 2021? I'd be happy to, thank you so much. I think that one of the things that we have to realize as a nation is that because we have not built enough housing over the years, there is a supply and demand problem. It's very, very simple math. If you don't have enough housing, the housing that exists is going to be harder to get. And so people raise their prices. Secondly, supply issues for our builders have created another problem. But the biggest issue, uh, Mr. Lucas, is that regulations from state and local governments have increased the cost of building a home by almost 30%. So when you talk about trying to make sure that you can build uh, multifamily residences, you have to look at the regulations. Some of it is zoning. Some of it is the kind of material. Some of it is planning. There are many issues that create a lack of housing. And so what happens is they will not build housing that is not profitable. The only housing that has been profitable over the last years is high income housing. We are destroying our core communities by not preserving housing. We are building um, many mansions where we should be building two and four unit buildings. But the biggest, in, the biggest impediment is regulation. And the second biggest is private persons who come in and purchase properties and put them on the rental market. There is an estimate today that in the next 10 years, 40% of all of the housing in this country will be owned by private corporations. Continuing with that uh, line of thought, with the massive shortage of housing in this country that we face, and we've got to look for opportunities to expand supply, and you've noted inflation, and you've noted a, a variety of issues. The Oklahoma City branch of the Kansas City Federal Reserve reports at the end of last year that Oklahoma has higher mortgage rates and higher home prices than a few years ago as Congress works through how to create the best conditions to increase the housing supply and bring down costs, what, what are some of the issues you anticipate working on with Congress, even during these difficult times, to address that? Well, we are hopeful that we are going to be able to continue to provide uh, tax credits, but at a higher rate than we are now, that we raise the cap on some of them because Things just cost so much more today. We're hopeful that there will be a neighborhood tax credit, which has been proposed by many members of the House and Senate. We're also hopeful that we will actually take a look at what it costs to do housing today and start looking at the supply chain, start looking at people who are monopolizing the market on certain kinds of goods and services, look at how we do more things locally so that the cost of getting, I was in Alaska, the cost to get materials to Alaska increases the value, increases the cost of that house threefold. Greetings, friends. This is good news. New rebate checks will soon be on the way for many households. In just a few weeks, distribution will begin, with these payments averaging $550. This is thanks to recently passed legislation in a few states. Top experts have also confirmed that mortgage rates are finally dropping to new low levels. My dear friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video to find out more about this. Also, tomorrow, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, please click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, friends, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. In February, over 700,000 Michigan families will receive tax credit checks through the state's expanded Working Families Tax Credit. These checks, which were based on last year's state tax return, are separate from any Michigan state tax refunds for the 2023 tax year. Governor Gretchen Whitmer highlighted that the expanded tax credit benefits half of Michigan's children. Families can use this extra money 
during tax time to cover bills, provide meals, and purchase school supplies. However, it's important to note that not all Michigan residents will receive the same amount. The distribution of Michigan tax credit checks will commence on February 13, 2024, as part of a $1 billion tax cut package, which was signed earlier in the year. The process is said to take up to six weeks, meaning some eligible taxpayers might not receive their checks until the end of March. The payments result from the expansion of Michigan's Earned Income Tax Credit, also known as a Working Families Tax Credit, and each check will average $550 per family. Individual amounts may vary, and some families may not receive a payment at all. The check amounts depend on factors for the 2022 tax year, such as income, the number of qualifying children, and filing status. Michigan's Working Families Tax Credit is worth up to $2,080 for the 2022 tax year. Eligible taxpayers received up to 6% of the credit as part of last year's state tax refund. The recent credit expansion allows 30% of that amount to be refundable, with the February checks refunding the remaining 24%. So most eligible taxpayers will not need to take any action to receive their payment in February. However, since the state will send all payments via a paper check, it is crucial to ensure that your address is current. Also, the Colorado State Auditor's Office has confirmed that Colorado collected more in revenue in the most recent fiscal year than the taxpayer's Bill of Rights allows. This means taxpayers will receive several hundred dollars in refunds. Local news stations say that each taxpayer will receive the same amount, no matter how much they make. Taxpayers will receive $800 each, or $1,600 for couples who file joint returns. Also, friends, according to Yahoo News, this week mortgage rates went down, making it much more appealing for people who are looking at interest rates to buy or sell homes. Freddie Mac has confirmed that the average rate for a 30-year loan dropped to 6.60% from the previous week. This is the lowest level in seven months since May 2023, when rates were around 6.57%. Home buyers are returning to the market because borrowing costs have dropped by almost 120 basis points since October, when rates were close to 8%. However, experts warn that even with more homes available, there might not be enough to meet the demand. Sam Cater, Freddie Mac's chief economist, told reporters, mortgage rates decreased this week, reaching their lowest level since May of 2023. Banks are seeing more buyers as mortgage applications have increased by 10% from the previous week. Part of the demand is from the homeowners who are now selling. In 2023, many homeowners stayed put to avoid selling and buying at higher interest rates. The share of homeowners with mortgages below 6% decreased to 89% from 93%. It is a record low in mid-2022. And according to Redfin, some homeowners are selling due to major life events or because they want a different home or city. Some areas are already reporting that homes are receiving 20 to 30 offers, indicating the potential for bidding wars in the future once again this year. That is the end of my daily stimulus update video for today. Tomorrow and every Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on friends, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed week.